topic of today is security. That means a lot of stuff. So this talk is not about technical thing or just a part, but it's about being curious. It's about curiosity. It's about history. It's about, it's about your life also and everything that, that, that is around you. It's about the disruption of technology and privacy. Uh, I was Raul on the chat lines, but I will tell you in a few slides. Then I became nobody because I discovered that FBI, they, they were curious about me. So I said, well, I have to change the nickname because it's my real name. And now I'm Raul Nobody Chiesa. What does it mean? As a teenager, I was the first hacker and I didn't know it. Uh, to give you a few examples, I was doing a bogus call in order to get passwords. And after a long time, I discovered that NAMED uh, social engineering and, the, and it's a professional thing. Uh, I was dumping into, that's hilarious, into trash cans in front of, the, of uh, Telecom Italia at that time, SIP, just to find books to study. And now it's NAMED tr it's trashing or dumpster diving. It's very professional. I didn't know it. So everything was into my DNA, I would say. Uh, it's funny, I was surprised. Uh, I know a lot of lawyers, and I, and I talk to lawyers, and they always they talk about me, about uh, all the laws on computer crimes. They've been built all because of me. The, uh, there were no law, any laws when I was hacking, so I wasn't actually breaking any law. Uh, crime is a wide concept. I was curious. Uh, I'm famous in Italy at least because I hacked at Bank Italia, and I didn't stole in a single cent. My wife, she used to tell me, you stupid. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> he's kidding. Uh, I'm like that. I'm not able to steal. I'm not able to cheat. I, I'm just curious. I want to understand how things are made and there if, if there is any mistake into that. Uh, the Polizia Postale, it's good guys and they, and they arrest the bad guys. They didn't exist. It was created because of me. I remember the first time a fan came to me. Uh, Can you send me an autograph? I say, I'm not Bruce Springsteen. Well, yeah, and so they used to say that I'm a piece of history, uh, which makes me feel kind of old, but I can understand that. Uh, am I mature? I don't know, I feel still a kid or a teenager, but am I visionary? Definitely I am. I love to think what will be and arrive to all of us and get to all of us. I love to set up companies, I'm company number four, uh, but it's not about the business, so I needed to pay my rent or whatever and the law on, but it's about to, again, to build stuff, to, especially to teach the young people and the students. Um, everything that is written over there, expert, advisor, I teach. I remember uh, one time I was, the, I was advising a minister of a given country, and he asked me, Raul, I wrote it in the newspaper, we should should we set up the red button to kill the internet if anything goes wrong? Minister, you cannot kill the internet. Uh, but it's kind of insane that he didn't make it because I told him no. I mean, there's something wrong here. And it's insane again because they still, all the politicians, they're not understanding uh, what, what's going on. Uh, internet is free. It, I hope it will always be free, but free to me means freedom, means privacy and other stuff. Uh, a multilingual, what does it mean? I can talk uh, to the most worse and dirty hacking conferences around the world, and I know the slang. Uh, I know the business slang, so I can speak and explain to a CEO uh, about security and to governments. I was nobody. So this is like is a class picture. Uh, I'm the second one from the top. I'm nobody. And why I was from Qatar? Because it was like... A, a bar in the evening or your club. And that was much before of the internet and all of that. And we used to hang out in this top elite uh, place. And I will tell you who are a few of those guys. Uh, and it was cool if you were calling from an exotic country. So actually, I was hanging out from a modem in Torino, Italy, in front of him. And uh, why? Because it was cool just to all with someone on the other side of the world. I remember when I was chatting with a guy in Serbia and he told me, bombs here. It was the war in Yugoslavia. I, rem I remember like if I was here in Berlin, well, when the wall fell down because I wasn't in chat with another hacker, Pango. And I was doing this with a Commodore. 
I was doing it. That's actually my modem is that one. I started with that ugly thing, so it was very slow. But it was sexy because you were there in the night waiting for interactor, 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 and typing and waiting. Uh, as of today, I think that we rush too much and we want a movie in two clicks and three seconds. Slow. <laughs> uh, between 86 and 95, I pwned the word. Pwned is a hacker word that means owning. Uh, at and they, they don't exist, exist anymore. It was the telecom in the world, at and I was at and at and was mine. Uh, I was into at and I was into, I was, I would have been able to command a satellite in Brazil. I mean, everything. Uh, it changed my life a lot because when you are a teenager and you got such a power in your hands, or you're stupid and you do stupid things, which may eventually impact on, on the real world, or you just keep a low profile and, and think about and learn a lot. I was arrested in Operation Ice Trap. Ice Trap because uh, I was hacking into a company which were making the algae ice cream. And the company, they were thinking that a spy was trying to steal the secret of the ice cream. I love ice creams, but I don't steal anything. And uh, SCO, which was the Sistone Centrale Operativa de Polizia di Stato, is the same. They were the cool cops who arrested uh, Totorina. And when they entered in my, in my house, I was 22, and they told me, you're not dangerous. Well, I know it, so why the gun and the mask and everything? Uh, and I could ever, ever forget when they drove me straight to Rome. It was a December, December 33, 1995. And I told to the two cops, hey, 200 kilometers per hour is snowing. I don't want to die in a car with two cops. No offense, huh? I get in room, and the chief of the agency of the school, she was there under the snow at 3 a.m. in the morning, and she's shaking my hand. Say, hmm? And she told me, Raul, we learn more intercepting you for six months than everything in our life. Thank you. Say, so you are, it's a thank you, you're going, me, um, you're going to jail me. And she told me, I cannot promise, but the prosecutor is a smart guy. He knows about you. You cannot be jailed. I mean, you are a brilliant mind, but you made a mistake. Don't do this again, or it will be jailed. Ever been jailed? I grew up, I understood. So I became an entrepreneur. Ethical hacking as a job was something incredible to me. I mean, my passion, my hobby as a job, wow. So I learned that there is something named at the uh, pen test or penetration test that is like you are hired, authorized, it's legal, and you are paid in order to hack, to hack into a system and explain how you make it. Wow. And I began, uh, 1996. Uh, some friends, she's Venix from Athens, so it's not true that, that, that we have no girls into hacking or, 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 or that those girls are ugly. Uh, she's Trinity. I mean, this picture is from, is before the movie Matrix and, and Trinity. They copied Trinity from her. Uh, she's so smart. Uh, this guy is crazy. Uh, he went to the anagrapher and he asked, he forced to change his name into him.com. He's the guy of Mega Upload, all the mega. And one day he called me like, hey, I'm coming to Italy. But it's weird, I want a surprise to a friend of mine. This guy, he drove from the north of Italy and to Rome with a Rolls Royce and the car plate is God. And he pretended to meet the Pope. And he was so close to make it. Why? Again, uh, if you know how to act, if you know social engineering, if you know how to break the rules and get the entry point, and the entry point here is a Rolls Royce. Uh, Who ever would be so crazy to try to step in the Vatican on our roles, it works. So unexpected things of often work. Uh, Ke Kevin Mitnick, he was one of my heroes. Uh, he's Kevin, he's the condor. And we, we have the same hobbies, uh, old computers, phone freaking. And this is a Piola in Torino, Italy. And it's funny because I was there, this is a picture from 12 years ago, 15. And the two owners of the Piola, uh, Piola for English is a type car resto, a uh, very easy one. They asked me, who is this guy? And said, so, well, it's very hard to explain. Uh, he was on the run from the FBI from, uh, for eight years, uh, books and movies about him. He's a friend of mine. 
He's Julian Assange, and that's a nuclear plant in France. I, I didn't know Julian, or better to say, when I wrote on the news about Assange, I, I say, I don't know who he is. I knew him by nickname, because uh, I was acting in Australia, he's from Australia, and in an interview uh, a few, a year ago, he said something like, I could ever forget, I will ever forget, when I was on, on the mainframe of a big computer of a nuclear plant in France, and I was chatting with an Italian hacker. Say, oh, that was me. Because I don't think that it was so popular to hack into a plant and, and chat over. Uh, today, uh, I wrote that slide back in 97. I knew that this was going to happen. Hacker, with, which deal with organized crime, and espionage, and terrorism, and state-sponsored attacks. And today we have the cyber war, information warfare, all of those things which are very scary to me, because it is driven by the politics. And it's very rare, it doesn't happen that much, that the po politicians, they get the right people to advise them and to explain them what it's about. Uh, I heard stuff like, well, if an IP address of the internet is into the logs, then that country hacked us and we have to hack back. No, an IP address is so easy to steal and change and whatever, so peace, please, and slow down. Uh, what we have today is what is carrying me, the per pervasivity of ICT. Uh, I used to do a job when I teach in some class, I bring in a jammer and I, and I switch on the jammer and the people cannot anymore use the smartphone, they get like crazy. Have you ever tried to go in airplane mode, mode for one hour? It's relaxing. I mean, you don't have to be all the time there or it's be better to say we are used it and we depend too much on ICT, always on and these kind of things. But what I'm, I'm here trying to tell you is that the new oil of today is the data. Anything is for free. Don't believe that's free. If it's free because you are the product, as we know, but you got no idea of the data that, that exists about you and is around all over the world. And this brings us to geopolitics, and hacking is always as a baseline, but hacktivism is something that may help the world in a good or wrong way and the info war and cyber war. And cyber war, as of today, could be even a children's game. That's from India and Pakistan. Uh, I love these sentences. The day the money became the focus of malware is the day the internet changed. It was in 2000. Until 2000, pl plenty of rowl around the world. Couriers, uh, that's it. I mean, no crime, no, no involvement with, with the money. I heard some figures before. Do you have the idea of, of the turnover of the cybercrime? It's like between 60 and 80 billions per year. And how they make the money? Stealing your data and selling the data all around. This is from 2007, guys. And Nikolai Kurianovich from the Duma, he used to say, he already understood at that time that the wars of today and tomorrow will be electronic ones, will be about the data, and the soldiers will be armies of hackers. And again, hacker is a big word, it means everything and nothing, and it's about how you are inside of you, it's about your soul. Uh, Ban Ki-moon from the UN, he said in 2010, it was nine years ago, he was urging to be more innovative when it comes uh, about emerging traits such as, uh, such as cybercrime. Uh, What's going, what is arriving? Uh, you have a smartphone or two, it means two IP addresses. You go back home, your ADSL or fiber optic, IP number three. You have a car, probably IP number four. In a few years, each one of us, we, we, we will wear on us between eight and 12 IP addresses. Uh, the privacy, stop believing in privacy, it's gone a long time ago. It's gone when you accept it on Facebook or Twitter or anything because you don't even read, we don't read, that we are giving them our data. It belongs to them now, but it's free. Uh, E-democracy, and scared by the massive controls. There are countries in the world, like Emirates or Sudan or so on, where the government is intercepting in a massive way everyone. And if you are a journalist, or if you are against uh, the leader, 
uh, they, they will electronically abuse the view. It's like a rape, but it's IT or ICT. Uh, I love technology. I will love when we will come to the autonomous car drivings, but again, this means artificial intelligence and machine learning, IoT, it's sexy words, but if this will not come with a security by design, bad things are going to happen. A car can be hacked, everything can be hacked. The ATM is the bankomat, it's a computer, it's a Windows machine. So don't do the mistake, all the suppliers, vendors, and the users, to don't think and forget about the security. Uh, otherwise, we will go back like there. And uh, I think that in, C in, in the 6G, after the 5G, we will be the operators of our own, but that's just an idea for myself. Uh, I mentioned to you how it works in the country. My, this is about massive interception and the, and the budget all around the world, but it's going to grow up more and more and more. Uh, I'm, cl I'm close to the end. He said something that is very cool. Privacy is not negotiable. Imagine if Nixon, he was here now with the technology of today. I would change the uh, world, hurt, I would fly on the moon and, and escape away. And he said something again, he quoted these two guys. The lady, she said at the UN in, in New York, if there is no right to privacy, there can be no true freedom of expression and opinion and therefore no effective democracy. We are losing our democracy. That's what I'm here to tell you about. We don't even know how to spell sub cybersecurity. It's in that way, it's with the space or the line, we deny it. So we should really go back to the roots, being humble and trying to understand that we are trying to manage sub something with a huge impact on our lives and we're really, we are not so confident on how to make it. And anyway, I'm a geek. I think that a lot in the audience are, are geeks. And the future belongs to us because no one else, they want it. But we want it. Thank you.